My name is Kamal Chaudhary. I'm a research scientist at NIST, and I'm very excited to be here in this uh, wonderful uh, event. Um, I'm going to talk about some of the topics uh, about the drugs infrastructure, but also some of the points regarding data sharing. So first, I'm going to talk about this the outline, uh, how, what kind of um, types of materials data we are talking about, and some of the components for, in my opinion, ideal data sharing. Okay? So when I talk about data and material science, there can be different types, in my opinion. There can be uh, microstructure, atomic structure, so the molecule structure, protein structure. It can be images from microscopy, TEM, STM. It can be spectra, extra diffraction, neutron, photoluminescence. It can be text. So different modularity of the data. And there can be different types of access, whether you want to download the data as a supplementary information of a paper or a, a fixture repository, or you want to have a REST API or web interface, right? So these are some of the broad categories of materials data and access. Uh, if you want to know more about this modularity of the data and uh, different type of uh, availability of this data sets and tools, I will highly encourage you. There's a review article we wrote on the AI application for deep learning uh, from material science, uh, which has a set of all the, uh, one of the, some of the most known, well-known data sets and tools. So feel free to check it out. Uh, with that, I want to point out, uh, I think most of us might be aware of this, but I, also, I still want to point out there are different types or different platforms for people to share data, such so as materials data facility, uh, NIST uh, materials data curation system, which is user Django and interactive app, NIST Simon's material data facility, which we just heard. There are like Fixshare, Zenodo, uh, OptiMed, and so on, uh, and, and Google Drive, and so on. But uh, today I'm going to focus on especially the NIST MDCS, materials data curation system, and one of them is Jarvis. So with that, uh, Jarvis is an infrastructure uh, with uh, several components, and it's available at uh, the URL jarvis.nist.gov. It has several components, such as density, functional theory, force field, machine learning, and so on. Uh, it was established in 2017, and uh, we have more than around 20,000 users worldwide. We also organize several events, Quantum Matters for Material Science, AI, MS, and Jarvis School. And uh, it is really viewed as one of the golden standard of material data, it's some of the words we are receiving. So. We appreciate the community appreciation of uh, all this uh, effort. And this is a brief history of the entire infrastructure. So we started in 2017 with evaluating force field and 2D material search. Then in 2018, we uh, expanded a DFT using vendor wall functional for uh, elastic property of 3D and 2D materials. We tried to solve the underestimation of band gap problems in DFT using uh, TV, MBJ, and developed a large data set of accurate band gaps. And we developed the CFI descriptor back then. In 2019, we emphasized the enforcement of key point in DFT databases and developed this uh, topological spin orbit split criteria for topological materials and solar cell efficiency. And in 2020, we did the uh, DFT and ML approach for 3D and 2D materials uh, and uh, uh, for NMR, NQR, and piezoelectric materials and heterostructures. 2021 was special one. We did the Align Atomistic Line Graph Network and Atomistic Quantum Computation. Enamel's quantum confinement effect and atom vision project uh, for STEM and STM repository, uh, the tight binding project for the entire periodic table, TV3Pi, metal organic framework for uh, direct air capture, uh, one year tight binding Hamiltonian, and we integrate with Optimate. In 2022, we developed this 3D superconductor database. We extended the aligned framework for force field so it can predict forces as well as energies. We extend for defects for using deep learning, tight binding, and DFT and quantum Monte Carlo and Amanus Halcon uh, confinement effect. Uh, we also developed this chem NLP, chem, uh, Natural Language Processing uh, Library. Uh, and we are holding several Jarvis school at several national labs and universities. So feel free to reach us out if you're interested. In 2023, we are doing the, uh, the 2D superconductor project. Uh, it's coming up to the Jarvis leaderboard as a, a platform to compare different data set and tools on one uh, framework and the Jarvis inverse design. So these were the data sets. There are also several tools in Jarvis. So usnisgov slash Jarvis is the collection of high throughput analysis and uh, framework tools. Uh, Align is the atomistic line graph. Chem NLP is a natural language processing library. Atom Vision is the machine vision library for atomistic images. Atom QC is the quantum computation library for atomistic system. Uh, TB3Pi is a tight binding model for the periodic table. And all of them are integrated in the Jarvis tools notebook to explain the features of this uh, data set and tools. So these are, uh, so when, when I talk about data sharing, right, um, I was thinking what can we uh, think of an ideal way of data sharing? So these are some of my opinions personally. So first is usually the static data image where we upload our data as a supplementary information. 
or a fixture and just link there. Or the next level is you develop an interactive app. So most of the research projects from materials that are, st uh, are usually stuck there, a static data upload. But only some of them go to the next step of developing an interactive app and so on. For example, Jarvis TFT. And, uh, and some of them actually share the exact data set and tools, which is nice. So for example, US Nuclear slash Jarvis give you entire data and tools to generate the, uh, uh, the paper uh, information and so on. <clears throat> so on. Uh, there is Jarvis tools notebooks. So next step is you not, not just only uh, give the data and the interactive app, app, you also give notebooks to explain your features, which is nice. And then next, uh, I think the materials data is, is going towards the leaderboard. So where we can uh, not just us, but people from different academia, national labs, industry, can upload their own model in a uh, in an agnostic way. So this is another step, which is important. And of course, uh, publicizing your data and tools on on journals and social media is very important. So these are some of the components I think are necessary for uh, for uh, efficient data sharing and data uses. So with that, I would like to conclude that um, there are different challenges in material science data sharing because of different modularity, and we should not be thinking only atomic structure and so on. We should think beyond that. Uh, and we talked about some of the components of data sharing. I uh, also point out these are some important links, uh, mostly on the US NISGAF slash uh, all the repositories. These are my email and the social media LinkedIn. Feel free to reach out. Also, I'd like to advertise NIST NRC postdoc uh, opportunity in our group. So if some of you have US citizenship and would like to work with us, feel free to reach out to do that. Uh, I would like to thank you for your time and the organizers for inviting me here. I, I really enjoy it uh, so far. Thank you.